Okay, I'm going to talk about probably one of the most unsexy bits of infrastructure you're likely to come across. Um, but anyway, Sword version three. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of history of the background, tell you where we are now, where we've got to, and it will actually probably race or repeat some of the points that came up in the standards discussion a little bit earlier. So yes, so we'll have an overview in history, then what's new in version three, um, talk about a reference implementation and where we are now with the project. And there's a link to the website up there. So a quick overview of SWORD. Um, SWORD protocol first came out about 12 years ago. Uh, it's very much part of the institutional repository landscape and it was designed as a protocol for automating the deposit of originally papers into repositories. Um, it's part of the next generation repository mode back because it's so ubiquitous. Um, and SWORD version 3, along with all the previous versions, there's a new version about every five or six years, is a protocol enabling clients and servers to communicate around complex objects. So it moves them back and forth. Complex objects, as far as we're concerned, consist of most metadata and file content. There may be a variety of formats, some of them may be very large, and it basically defines basic operations for remotely creating, appending, replacing, deleting, retrieving information about these resources. To enable servers to communicate with each other about the status of particular content, so whether it's been processed, um, whether it's been completely deposited or saved, that sort of thing. So a little history. First version, um, 1.0 was a little bit ropey, but version 1.3, about 12, 13 years ago, was built on um, the resource creation aspects of a protocol called AtomPub back then. And the idea was it was fire and forget. You basically fired up a sword session, injected your package and its metadata into the server, and that was your job done. Over the next five years, it became evident that this was insufficient. Um, sometimes you wanted to construct a digital artifact file by file over a period of time. Um, sometimes you wanted to update the metadata and add additional information. So SWORD 2 was developed really to service these use cases and just extended SWORD 1. SWORD 3 is quite a significant update, primarily because really the libraries that support the original protocol, underlying protocol at and pub are getting a bit long in the tooth. Nobody really uses it anymore. And the sorts of things we're putting in repositories are really quite different now. So it's quite a significant update. It moves to a REST and JSON type approach. It's aligned with linked data, and it's much more focused on research data management rather than straightforward publication. So key features for version three, um, or what I will say is the basic underlying object model for what it's moving around doesn't change from previous versions. So in terms of implementing it in repositories that already support SORT 2, it's not a major change in terms of any underlying architecture or anything like that. Um, but key features for version three that I'll just go over in the next slides are just listed there. So first of all, what's called concurrency control. And the idea is you should be able to have several um, rights going on at the same time. Back in the good old days, 10, 12 years ago, we weren't expecting a lot of load on servers. That's changed dramatically. And um, it also manages the, um, ensures that you can't have two things writing to an object at the same time. So it's basic transactional management there. There is the notion of continued deposit. So you can start putting some data onto the server and say, I haven't finished yet. I'll come back later and give you some more. And there are headers there that will handle a long session. Uh, again, allowing you to handle big data sets and that sort of thing. Metadata deposit or metadata only deposit. Um, one of the things we're increasingly seeing is that repositories will actually contain metadata that references data that's stored elsewhere. So we need to be able to just put the metadata into there and then a pointer to wherever that data set actually sits. Uh, and it now supports a little bit of negotiation around metadata types. Package deposit, um, explicitly here, Bagit is becoming very prevalent um, as a packaging format of transferring stuff. So we will allow you just to basically submit a packet which contains the files of metadata. And again, there's a little bit of negotiation around package formats, but Bagit is required. 
segmented file to upload allows you to upload a big file in, in segments. Um, pretty obviously says that. Again, this is all about handling large data sets, not something we had to do with um, publications in general, but increasingly we're starting to move to data sets. And by reference deposit, where for really large things or cumbersome things, you can actually deposit a system and just say, here's a link to the item, asynchronously retrieve that and let me know when you're done. So effectively you can complete the transaction and it's up to the client and server to negotiate the, the transfer of that data, which may be using one of the big data protocols. So uh, first off, the specification came out in 2018. This is glue that sits between elements of the um, open ecosystem. So it's not a software product in its own right. It's a bunch of libraries and sits there. So it's, it's not really very sexy as far as funders go, which is one of our difficulties. But anyway, first draft came out in 2018. We then had some revisions and tweaks going into 2019. Um, as a result of implementing the test set and starting to do the um, reference implementation, which is based around the Invenio platform, um, which is what sits underneath um, Zenodo, amongst other things. So um, having got to that, we then started working through the reference implementation, focusing on the core mandatory features of the protocol to prove concept, to verify it's implementable, and at the same time to actually develop a validation suite. So written in Python, and we completed that this year. Partners um, working on it, JISC funded us originally. Um, the reference implementation was jointly funded by, well, was funded by NII in Japan. Um, and we've had some supporting funds from EBSCO around um, documentation and things like that. And the development was handled by CERN and Venio. Uh, Cottage Labs, who are Invenio RDM partners, and I, for my sins, am community lead and partly technically involved with that. So one, where are we looking? One minute, please, Neil. Okay, so where are we going in terms of next steps? Um, we're looking really for opportunities to update the SWORD implementations in other, other repository platforms, and also looking for funding and projects that would, are interested in automated deposit of material into things like Fedora, DSpace, um, Zenodo and Invenio RDM. Um, we're at the moment, we're working on updating the website, getting the documentation sorted out, and we are looking for a long-term home for SWORD. It doesn't have a not-for-profit or anything like that. It is just a floating standard at the moment, and we're interested in trying to find a more permanent organisational home for it. Thank you.